So in this video, I'd like to provide what the title suggests is a practical review of Taylor series. It's not a deep mathematical treatment, really just enough to get by in a, um, in a computational methods course or a dynamic systems and control course for, for these very practical applications. And the first thing I'm going to do is erase this word Taylor series or the term Taylor series because students tend to be a little intimidated by that. Maybe they had a bad experience with Taylor series. It's really quite beautiful. It's quite very understandable. And, and we'll go from here. All right, so I'm in a program called Desmos. It's a nice little free online plotting program. And I'm gonna define fx here as the sine of x. And it draws a nice little sine wave for me. So for this function f of x, you know it's a sine wave. I know it's a sine wave. But for now, let's just pretend it's some function of x, some almost arbitrary function of x. So in this exercise we're about to do, what we want is an approximation. That approximation is something we're going to call s. And it's going to be an approximation of the function f. Now this approximation isn't going to be, and it's not really supposed to be good over the entire range or the entire domain of f, but it should be really good at some point x0, okay? Typically x0 is some point of special significance, but for us it's going to be some arbitrary point. So for this point x0, we can pretty much, you know, as far as we're concerned today, we're going to choose it to be just about any point, some arbitrary point. Uh, some points are a little easier than others, but we sort of arbitrarily pick a point. How about how about I pick a point right here at 2.2? At x0 is equal 2.2, the function f is up here someplace, and I want my approximation sx to be a really good approximation, a pretty good approximation of f, sort of in this neighborhood of 2.2. All right, so we're going to start off with approximation number zero. And for approximation number zero, I'm going to call it S0, some function of X. And my initial, most, the most crude approximation I'm going to make, I'm going to say uh, the function S0 is just a constant. I'm going to call it a constant C0. Now remember, I want the approximation to be really good uh, near x0. So in particular, I want s0. And when I evaluate it at x0, I want it to equal the function at x0. So, but s0 is just the constant. So in order to get this match, this means that that constant c0 has to be f at x0. Yeah, I'm kind of going uh, beating around the bush here. So this essentially means that my zero order approximation s0 is just going to be f evaluated x0. It's just going to be this constant right here. So back in Desmos, the first thing I'm going to do is define x0. This is 2.2. And then I'm going to define s0. So s0 is a function of x. This is just going to be sine at x0. So here's where we are, this black curve right here, that's the function f of x, and the red one, this one is my approximation at s0. And we can see here at, at x equals 2.2, the function s, my approximation s0, matches the function f perfectly, right? They're a perfect match right there. The problem is that they're only a really good match right at that point. If you venture off that point, x0, just a little bit, they, they, they don't look alike, right? So what I'd like to do is come up with another approximation. I'll call it approximation number one. I'll call it approximation number one, s1. Again, it's going to be a function of x. And I let this one be f evaluated at x0 plus a linear term, so we can have some slope, right? So I'm going to say, I'll call that part C1 times X minus X0. So let's think about this choice. When X is equal to X0, what happens? When X equals X0, this term right here in parentheses, that goes away, right? So when X equals X0, S, S1, I should say, evaluated X0 is just going to be F of X0. So therefore, we'll still have that match. In other words, the value of my approximation and my actual function will match at x0. 
But what this new approximation gives me is a way for my function to vary with x, right? In this case, it'll vary linearly with x. So this thing is going to have some slope at this point right here. And what we want to happen, we want the slope of this approximation to do is match the slope of the actual function that we're approximating. And that slope is the first derivative. So what we need to do is we need to match match that first derivative. So let's do that. We'll take the derivative of s1 with respect to the independent variable x. And that's just going to be c1, right? And we want to evaluate this at, at x equals x0, by the way. And we want this to match the derivative of f evaluate with respect to x, also evaluated at x0. So therefore, c1 has to equal that derivative. And therefore, my first order approximation is going to be all this stuff, right? So s1 is going to be the original value of that function at the, at the special point x0. Plus the slope here, the c1 is going to be the derivative of, is going to match the derivative of f. So I put the derivative of f with respect to x at x0, and I got this linear variation. And that's it. This is my first order approximation. Okay, so back in Desmos, when I define this new function s1, notice that the very first term, that, that's the same as s0, right? So when I write this thing out, I can say, um, s1, that's just s0, plus, plus what? Uh, I got a coefficient here, which is the derivative of f. The derivative of f is, is, the, is the derivative of sine. Derivative of sine is cosine, and I'm evaluating that at x0. So what we have here is a cosine of x0 times x minus x0. And look what we got there. So this black curve right here, this is the original f of x. The red curve, this one's the, the zeroth order approximation. This is s0. And the blue curve, this is the new one. This is our first order approximation. So this is s1 function of x. So there's our new approximation. And you can see the new approximation is quite good, right? New approximation, I can zoom in on this thing and the, and the function the original function, the black curve, and, and the approximation, the blue curve here, they're almost right on top of each other if I'm close enough to, the, to that, that point of interest, the x0, right? If I zoom far enough away, then you can see that they differ. But as I get close to that, that evaluation point, the x0, these two functions look very similar. So guess what? We're going to make another approximation. We're going to keep the theme going. So this approximation we're going to call S1. Excuse me, this, uh, this approximation we're going to call S2. And it's going to start off looking exactly like S1, right? But we're, we're going to add one more term, and you can probably guess it's going to have a quadratic piece. So I'll call it C2 times x minus x0 squared. So what's this quadratic piece going to do? Well, remember my s1, my previous approximation, it matched the original function at x0, and it also matched the slope beautifully, right? But the original function, the f, was curved here, right? But an s1 cannot be curved because it's a linear function. So we're adding this quadratic piece to our second order approximation to give our approximation some curvature. And in order to get the right coefficient here, the c2, what I'm going to do is get the second derivative of my approximation, the s2, to match the second derivative of my original function f at the point x0. So I'd like to make an observation here. Let's, let's take um, the derivative of s2 with respect to x. And when I do that, what do I get? Uh, this first term is just a constant, so I take the derivative of that, that's 0. The second term, this df dx, that evaluated x0, that's a constant. But I'm multiplying by x, right? So the derivative is going to be df dx evaluated x0. And that's it for the second term. And then the next piece, I've got uh, plus c2 x, oops, there's a mistake. Get rid of that. It's going to be 2 times c2 times x minus x0. Right? So there's my first derivative of the s2. 
But when I'm at x equals x0, this term goes away. So my derivative of s2 is still the derivative of f. So the so when I put this in for my second order approximation, I still get the slopes to match. And all I have to do now is choose the c2 to get the second derivatives to match. What's the, before, before I, I erase this, what's the derivative of this right-hand side going to be? Well, this first term is just a constant. So when I take the derivative of that, that's going to be 0. And when I take the derivative of this piece, I just get the constant 2c2. So therefore, I've got the second derivative of s2. This is going to equal 2 times c2. And I want this to match the second derivative of f, right? So the derivative of f, second one that is, evaluated x0. So this tells me that c2 has to be 1 half that second derivative. So I'm going to take this expression right here and substitute it directly into there. And now I get my second order approximation. So here's my second order approximation, right? I get the, I get the constant term. I get a linear term that's proportional to the, the derivative of f. I get a quadratic term whose coefficient is 1 half times the second derivative of f. And there we have it, my second order approximation. Let's go ahead and put it into the, the plotter. Okay, let's do a new function. So I've got s2 this time. And remember the first two terms are the exact same terms we had in s1. So I'm just going to refer back to, to the function s1. And now I get to add in my new piece. My new piece had the second derivative of f, right? f was sine of x. So therefore the first derivative was cosine. The second derivative would be minus sine. So let's put a minus here, minus sine, evaluated at x0. Remember, I have to divide this whole thing by 2 as well. So put that in there. And then I say x minus x0. And I got to square this quantity. Aha! Check that out. Uh, the second approximation is this green curve. And let's make the observation right now. This green curve, let me zoom in on it a little bit. So the green curve um, at 2.2, here's 2.2 right there. It matches the function perfectly. It has the exact right slope, and it has the exact right curvature of the black curve. Remember, the black curve is the original curve we're trying to approximate. And it's just hugging that black curve along... Wow, it's along a curved path. Look at this thing. So when we're really close to the point of interest, I can get a little bit closer. These curves just match up beautifully. And I can keep on playing the game, right? I can come up with a third order approximation, which not only matches the value, the first derivative, the second derivative, but I can make it also match the third derivative. So here's what that third order approximation would look like, right? Here's constant, linear, quadratic, cubic, right? Here's the third order piece. If I want to add a fourth order piece, it would look like 1 over uh, 24. This is 4 factorial, by the way, down here. 1 over 4 factorial, fourth derivative. Here's what we get. And if I wanted a fifth order approximation, in other words, I get an approximation that matches the fifth derivative, like so, and then this goes on. I can add as many pieces as I want to get higher and higher order derivatives to match. And by the way, this thing has a name. It's called the Taylor series. It's an infinite series. I can go on and on. And for certain functions, which are called analytic, this series gets closer and closer and closer to the actual function as you take more and more terms. And that's what it's all about. Now, before we go, let me just show you a, a one more, one or two more little things. So we chose an x0, right? This is the point we're going to take, or we defined our Taylor series about. I'm using the technical word now, Taylor series. So x0 is, a, is the point we took the Taylor series about. And x, uh, this 2.2 was just an arbitrary number. I could have chosen more, more or less any number. 
And since I wrote my little Desmo script here in keeping it general with the x0, we can, we can change this number on the fly. In fact, I can create a little animation. Let me just plot this as I'm changing the value of x0. You can see, you know, the red curve is the zeroth order approximation. The blue curve is the first order approximation. So that gives you the slope. The green curve, that's the curvature approximation, right? There's the second order term. And it's just mesmerizing, I think, just to watch these things sort of move around as you change uh, the point at which you're defining the the Taylor series about and we're heading back now yeah so loop that thing that, that thing's awesome to look at and finally let me show you this last one this last one is way down here I'm not sure if you can see that where you are uh, yeah so here's s9 so this is the ninth order uh, a Taylor series expansion so it has a ninth order polynomial in it and check it out it's this blue curve remember the black curve is my function it's the sine curve the blue curve uh, and it intersects the red curve that's s0 so it so here's 2.2 right there where they match up beautifully but s9 is this one right here and look how beautifully it matches with the sine curve for a long way yeah, look at that thing. So the more terms you take, the better the fit for one of these functions like like sine, which is which is everywhere analytic. But check out that match. That's just so cool to see. And if you want me, I can animate this one too. So let's let's watch this as it as it moves. In fact, let me as it's moving, let me scoot the plot window over a bit. Yeah. So the match, I think it was right here. Yeah, here's where we're matching. And just look at the look at the blue curve just sort of wrap itself around the sign. Here, here watch it wrap around. Whoop. <laughs> I just love watching this thing. I can just watch it all day. So beautiful little uh, numeric or analytic approximations here. All right, so that ends the video. Um, over and out.